we're out and about again. And there's the coachman sitting over there. Today, I wanna to solve the dead battery issue in the coachman. The, the house battery is, well, I just picked it up recently. I have no idea how old the battery is. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's not been, even if it's relatively new, it hasn't been taken care of. Uh, it's been drained way, way down. That damages batteries, and um, I, I just I just know it's bad. It's going to get replaced today. Uh, not with just one, but two. And, yeah, I need to go grab that uh, out of the coachman here real quick. It's raining, so uh, let's go over there for a minute. All right, I got the battery out, and just as I suspected, it is indeed an older battery, and um, it is losing its ability to hold a charge. I didn't see the date on here is uh, September of 2017. So, uh, you know, it's at the end of life on average. I mean, just roughly, it should, you know, it should get, be able to get five years out of a battery, give or take, depending on how well it's been looked after. Uh, if it's been abused and overly discharged too many times, that uh, certainly affects its uh, lifespan. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I checked that we had uh, actually 13 point... What was that? I know you won't be able to see it here. Let me just uh, ver let me just verify. What do we have here? A healthy battery should be resting at twelve seven, and what we have is about eleven eleven point six eleven seven. So I'm going to measure this uh, compartment. These, the house batteries in the coachman are uh, under the under the entry step. So the one step lifts up there under there. I just got to measure that compartment and make sure there's room for the two batteries. It, it there is, uh, I, <laughs> there is room. It is meant to be able to put two batteries in it, but I just got to verify, uh, write the dimension down, and then just verify I don't put too big of a battery. Uh, in it and find out oh it doesn't quite fit so I you know I just got to make sure I get the right size batteries that'll two of them will fit in there so I'm pretty sure this battery you know if I clean the label off it's probably made by Johnson Controls it's the same company that makes uh, just about everybody's batteries from you know diehard batteries to interstate batteries to Napa batteries um, O'Reilly's uh, uh, AC Delco batteries Motocraft batteries Walmart's batteries, um, they, they kind of make everybody's, uh, it's just one manufacturer that makes them all. So I'm not going to be real fussy on, uh, on getting stuck on a name brand with the same company that makes them all anyway. Um, thing about, you know, I need to solve this issue here. It's been low. Um, if it was a healthy battery, it should have held charge better than that. So, because we made that trip, uh, traveled all that way. So the, the alternator in the RV was charging it. And, you know, while it was running, I mean, it was showed good, but of course, that, most of that power is being shown from the alternator. When we ran the generator yesterday, uh, the house, the onboard um, converter was sending at 12 volts, so it was healthy then. But once you shut off those sources, you know, it's, it, it just starts diving back off and it just can't hold a charge anymore. So, and here I am getting ready to diagnose this refrigerator and see if I can get it, that old thing running again. There's no point. There's no point even beginning to diagnose that until, uh, number one, I make sure it has both fuel and a good healthy 12 volts. So, and that's the same with, um, you know, any RV. Any RV that has propane appliances, uh, you know, it relies on, it needs, uh, even the newer ones have a, a controller, a controller up top that, you know, it requires a good healthy 12 volts. So it, just knows what it's doing. It's they just don't operate right on low voltage, um, and so well in all of them, even the older ones, they rely on you know. There's a you turn the switch on, whether it switches to this mode or to that mode, and the, I think the gas solenoid and the igniter, you know, all that stuff requires healthy voltage. So I, I can't expect to. Uh, I'm not going to start fighting this thing and expecting any kind of results if I'm not giving it a good healthy 12 volts and make sure it has fuel, the propane, which we got that system all um, checked out and working yesterday. So, okay, we're good with propane. Now I need to get some good 12 volts and then I'll have a look at it. And that would also be the, uh, true with the hot water tank. Uh, even though that one's probably just gonna get replaced, I might, we'll, we'll see. 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna just replace it. But thought we might give it a chance at first. I, I kind of was looking for one online and uh, I think I found an exact replacement. So uh, I have to look into that further. Uh, but from now, I might actually find a plug to put back in it and fill it up. And uh, I know it'll have propane now too. And if it has a good 12 volts, maybe it'll light. Maybe I can get by on it for a bit until I locate just the right one. So we'll just see how all that goes. For now, uh, we're gonna run up and get two new batteries and um, go from there. Those appliances, they're, they're no different than trying to, you know, start your car, truck, or SUV. You know, if, if it's out of gas, it's not gonna start. If the battery's dead, it's like, a, you know, you need to have, you have to make sure there's fuel and you have a good battery or it's just, it's not gonna, don't expect it to do very well, okay? So. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna stop at Tractor Supply first and see what they got. Okay, I'll be right back. And I am so glad I thought to measure that battery box because the uh, the biggest deep cycle batteries that I could find uh, typically at auto parts stores and stuff that I put in the bounder are, they're 13 inches long. The battery box is only 25 and a quarter. So 13, 13 is 26. It would two of those batteries wouldn't quite fit so i'll have to find deep cycles that are you know 12 and a half that would only leave a quarter inch i mean that's a anyway i'm going to do some measuring around. i'm going to see what i can find today all right so i grabbed the old one i had another one in the garage uh it was an older battery they do charge a core charge so whatever the battery costs if you don't have it with you to, to trade in uh, you know, there's a lot of lead in here to be recycled. They're eight, ten dollars roughly. I don't know. I haven't uh, bought one in a little while. We'll see what they are. But I'm buying two batteries. I have two cores. So, uh, all right, we'll get on with it. All right, tractor supply. Here we come. Oops, I had to go back. I almost forgot this. <laughs> well, they do have three of these. Uh, okay, it's um. These would just fit. These, these, two of these would just fit. And these were made uh, August uh, August of uh, last year, 2021. That's uh, that's not too old. They've been on shelf a little while, but they do have actually three of them. 144.99. That seems a bit much, actually. Uh, I'm sure they're made the same thing. I bet they're made from joints and controls. Uh, I don't see it on there. I'm sure it's on there somewhere. So, uh, you know, for 145 bucks each. Let's go shop around a little bit. As much as I love the lithium battery I put in the van, <laughs> in real dollar for dollar, I mean, lithiums have come down. Dollar for dollar, I think it's actually the better, better deal. Uh, the number of recharges, just the, the lifespan performance, you know, dollar for dollar, it's, uh, but we're not just not gonna do it. I run lead, I've been running lead acid batteries in the bounder for over three years. They've been, they perform well. Uh, they're more budget friendly and <laughs> so, uh, not quite the performance, but it, you know, it gets the job done. We're just gonna, I'd rather, rather have the better battery. Uh, I got a lot of things going on at the same time. Some expenses getting this uh, uh, repair, other stuff going on, so. I'm gonna try to be a little friendly on the budget, and uh, they'll be fine. We'll just, you know, we'll be fine. No, you cannot go into O'Reilly's with me. You cannot go into O'Reilly's. You could, but you can wait. You'll be all right. Okay, O'Reilly's. Oh, there's Taco Bell next door. <laughs> all right, I, uh, I, I should have recorded something in there. You know. You know what? I don't like when uh, uh, people, uh, employees are argumentative. Okay? I know a little something about batteries. I'm not a, I mean, I don't pretend to be a, I know it all, but, you know, I do know a few things. And, um, anyway, the guy, you know what? When you, you know, the customer's always right. I learned this. The customer's always right. Even when they're wrong, they're right. You know, you treat them, you don't get argumentative with them. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, they had about the same battery that was over at Tractor Supply for only $104. And uh, they had two of them, and they were actually fresher than what was on the shelf over there. Three, uh, January, February, uh, March of this year, March of 2020, 
2022, March, and this is only April. So, um, I'm going to run over Walmart real quick because that battery is actually like a hybrid battery. It's between a standard automotive and a true deep cycle. And it would work, you know. Uh, I might just come back and grab two of those. The thing about that is probably neither one of us was probably entirely right. I mean, neither one of us are a battery expert. He just going by what he's learned or has been trained. Uh, and I just can go by my experience and things I've heard and read. So uh, in the end, I'm just going to get what I think is best. At least these Walmart batteries are actually called out and cranking. They uh, specify how many amp hours. And uh, these bigger ones that won't quite fit, unfortunately, are 105 amp hours. Uh, but it's just a little bit too long. And 109 bucks. But these will fit. There's two of these. and But they're only 80 uh, crank, uh, amp hours each. So I'll have a total of... 160 uh, amp hours out of these two batteries. Oh well, I could always expand my battery bank uh, someday down the road, but I think I'm gonna get two of these. And these are only $94. Well, that was relatively painless. Here they are. I'm gonna give them a real quick check here. Maybe I'm getting old. And sometimes I think I'm starting to suffer from grumpy old man syndrome. <laughs> um, I really got to bite my lip sometimes with the uh, cashiers and stuff. Uh, I wonder sometimes if they were, how much training they had and stuff. You know? <laughs> All right. And my old batteries, you see, these things are pretty heavy. The old, I didn't have a shopping cart on the way in. Want any jam? I manhandled them all the way in this door. <laughs> they get, they're pretty heavy. So, I can't do that. I don't know if I can still do that, right? Alright, I wanted to check these real quick before I left Walmart. Because, I mean, there is a such thing once in a while as a defective battery. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but it... Uh, as a matter of fact, I've only run into it one time a few years back. So, but I thought, oh, I forgot my voltmeter. How am I going to check these? But... This new battery charger I have, even though it's uh, dusty and everything, uh, does have a nice funk. I really love these newer ones that have, uh, that are digital. Um, actually, right now this thing blinks because it knows it doesn't have a good connection. I don't know if you can see that up there or not. Uh, but it has a nice function up here where you can just hook it up and push battery voltage. It'll tell you what it is. 12.7. Perfect exactly exactly what i would expect for a healthy resting battery all right so i'll take it off of there and it starts blinking again because it knows it's not connected it doesn't have a good connection negative and positive all right battery voltage oh 12.6 um that's still acceptable for something that's been sitting on the shelf since october well we're gonna call it we're gonna call it good uh yeah and actually i could <laughs> i have this plugged into the jackery actually so um you know i could put it on charge so <laughs> portable power portable power all right we're gonna uh we're just gonna uh matter of fact there's no harm in that we can just uh I want that trickle charge in here. I just put the jackery down. No, I better not do that. Never mind. We don't want these gassing off inside the van. All right. <laughs> Bad idea, Dave. All right. Let's get out of here. I don't remember if I said so or not, but it is supposed to clear up. It is going to clear up later and get sunny, and it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Uh, I'm I just want to, I'm not going to go back down to the RV just yet. We're going to wait till later today and probably bring it up to the garage. And like I said in the last video, we're going to, you know, blow some cabinets out and storage things. And it, it'll be nice and sunny. And uh, I'll put these batteries in up there. So that's probably where we'll check back in at here. All right, we've made it back to the garage. Uh, I brought the batteries in here for now. 
And uh, oh, this box, yeah, the solar system did come. There are four 100-watt uh, panels in here, plus the charge controller and all the cables. Everything I need to uh, put solar on the new RV, new to me RV. And uh, and this package is actually, uh, I think it's called the uh, the weatherhead, uh, where the cables will go down through the roof and uh, there's you know the seals and stuff, and uh, a 40 amp breaker. Since there's a 40 amp charge controller in here. I want to put a 40 amp breaker um, ahead of it so if any time maybe a lightning strike or some dang thing and if anything beyond 40 amps is headed towards the uh the charge controller that it hits and trips this breaker first uh, uh, i'm not an expert at such things but uh, that's the way i understand it how i need to protect the system so what i'm going to do here right now is since for the time being, I'm just I'm not going to go down and bring the uh, the coachman up here just yet. Uh, the rain has moved out. Hopefully, um, the clouds will be following. Uh, they're on their way out too. But uh, oh, with all that rain, I think I'm just going to wait and let the uh, the ground absorb it, and maybe I'll go down first thing in the morning and bring it up here. Uh, yeah, the ground's a little it's a little uh, little soft. So, and it's, it's getting later in the day. I have. Uh, more packages coming and some other stuff going on but so for the time being what I'm gonna do is uh, since these two batteries are getting ready to spend their life together <laughs> I'm gonna just go ahead and marry them now so for now yeah by marrying them to, together okay I put positive to positive and negative to negative with these cables uh, probably uh, and uh, really with the uh, once they're installed I should probably upgrade the little bit heavier cable uh, for the time being just charging it uh, this is fine there's not a lot of power going from one to the other they're really uh, within 0.1 volts of each other so not a lot of uh, current's going to be going on here it's not an issue at this time yeah here's the thing I didn't think I showed you good enough on the other uh, the other shot when we were still up at uh, where were we? Walmart I don't know if you can see that or not why isn't it showing up with the camera that is weird Oh, there it goes a little bit these there it is see those two things blinking uh, that's a sign that and anybody that's ever jumped the car before jumped batteries before you know you've been like uh, maybe they were dirty connections and you have a hard time getting the thing on there getting a good connection you got to wiggle it and you know until you get a good connection well you know that lets you know whether you have a good connection or not so as soon as I hook this other one up then that goes steady all right where are they? There you go. So we'll hook this one up. There it is. It's steady. It lets you know you have a good connection. So uh, that's it. That's a, that's a configuration. <laughs> Let's, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on charge. And uh, you know, they've been sitting on a shelf you know, since they were manufactured. Good. Probably went to a warehouse and, and sitting, uh, sitting on a shelf for a while. So uh, we'll just top them off. I mean, they're healthy. They're in a healthy range, but... That's it. We'll turn this on and uh, initially it's going to go up to charging at 16.4 amps and that'll actually start settling down here pretty quickly. It's like the uh, the, the charger's kind of evaluating here. It's having a look and uh, it'll do it pretty quickly. It'll start dropping down. But we're going to absolutely top these off. They will be at their best. They will be um, equalized uh, because they're now married. Who ever heard of batteries being married? <laughs> All right, yeah, and I got some other jobs to do here uh, this evening. So, uh, one of them's this tractor sitting here. All right, it's my buddy's nephew's. Uh, he's not real mechanically inclined. He just really likes it if uh, somebody looks at it like at the beginning of the, every season. Here, it wouldn't start. It actually had a bad battery connection. That's all cleaned up. A proper bolt was, I put a proper bolt in it to hold it properly. Blew everything out, the little dead grass from last season all out of the engine, out of the cooling fins, and the air cleaner was all packed full of, you know, it needed blow it out really bad. Uh, it's pretty much done, it's running. Uh, and uh, I just gotta change the oil on it yet. That's, uh, I got a, a, a new filter is coming uh, today. So I'll change the oil on it and he can pick this up tomorrow. But uh, once I got everything uh, fixed and blowed out and everything, I did take a little test. Little test drive in, in mode uh just make sure everything else about it was okay 
I think she's gonna be ready for a new season. And one other job. Uh, the neighbor lives up across the, the other side of the valley there. Yeah, he brought down this old computer that doesn't uh, doesn't uh, turn on anymore. Yeah, not only is it not boot, it just doesn't power on at all. So, um, you know, it could be a number of things. It could be the power supply went bad. Uh, it could be an issue with the motherboard. Uh, he did bring his external uh, his external hard drive down. What he asked if I could do is um, the hard drive. As long as that's not what failed, and it probably didn't. I can take this out, this hard drive out, take it to a computer I have set up for doing such tasks, and I'll hook it to it as a secondary drive. Uh, as long as I can access it, you know, um, it works properly, I can pull all the files off of it, and then I'll dump them onto his external drive, and then he can take them home and transfer those old files uh, to his newer computer. And I guess this hard drive has, you know, old pictures of his, of his kids and uh, various occasions, you know, wedding or, you know, type of, so there's a lot of uh, valuable pictures on there, but uh, I'll retrieve them for him. Yeah, I'm a jack of all trade, master of none. <laughs> all right, um, all right, we'll, we'll wrap this up. I'm, we'll probably resume this tomorrow uh, morning. We're gonna go down, it should be sunny. We're gonna go down and fetch the coachman and get on with this whole battery thing and take the next steps, you know, one step at a time. That's the way it is. Thanks for coming along today. I'll see you soon. Bye.